Your doctor has ordered enteral nutrition, also called tube feeding, that will be administered through your feeding tube. This educational video will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to administer your tube feeding effectively and safely. It is important to clean your hands to prevent infection. Clean hands thoroughly using soap and warm water, rubbing hands for at least 20 seconds, followed by drying hands with a clean towel. If soap and water is not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Prior to preparing your tube feeding, select an uncluttered work area. Clean the work area with warm, soapy water or antimicrobial cleaning agent. Gather all formula and supplies needed for the tube feeding. Locate the tube feeding order included in the delivery. Check the expiration date on the formula carton. Make sure the name on the formula label matches the tube feeding order. Unopened formula can be stored at room temperature until the expiration date. Formula may come as a powder or liquid. Powdered formula should be mixed per manufacturer instruction, unless otherwise directed by your doctor. Once formula is mixed, it must be kept refrigerated until ready to use. Mixed formula should be covered and stored in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours. Throw away any unused portion after 24 hours. If using liquid formula, wipe off the top of the container with a clean cloth and shake well before opening. Liquid formula should be covered and stored in the refrigerator after opening for up to 24 hours. Throw away any unused portion after 24 hours. Open cartons of liquid formula or mixed powder formula should be covered and stored in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours or per manufacturer guidelines and can stay at room temperature for no more than 4 hours for mixed formula or human milk or 12 hours for ready-to-use liquid formulas. Your doctor has ordered your tube feedings to be given via a feeding pump. Review the tube feeding order and schedule, including the pump rate, hours of infusion, and total volume needed in a 24-hour period. For this feeding administration, you will need tube feeding order, towel, formula ready to use, pole, kangaroo joey pump, kangaroo joey pole clamp, kangaroo joey power cord, kangaroo joey feeding bag, syringe, lukewarm water for flushing, connection adapter for bag if feeding tube utilizes cone tip connection. Twist and lock connections will not require a connection adapter. When using the pump on a pole, start by attaching the pole clamp to the pump by turning the blue and white handle to the left to lock the pump in place. Then mount onto the pole by turning the blue knob to the right clockwise until it's tight and securely in place. Insert the power cord into the back of the pump. This pump uses an internal rechargeable battery for up to 18 hours of backup power. Best practice is to keep the pump plugged in when not in use. Holding the feeding bag upright, pour in the formula. Securely close the lid on the feeding bag by pressing down in the middle of the cap. The top of the formula in the bag should be 6 inches above the pump. Hang the feeding bag on the hook at the top of the pole. Open the blue door on the pump. Locate the clear tab on tubing and set into the pump facing upwards. Wrap the tubing around the pump wheel per the diagram under the door of the pump. Ensure that the tubing exits the side of the pump and then close the blue door. For feeding administration with a backpack, you will need tube feeding order, towel, formula ready to use, backpack, kangaroo joey pump, kangaroo joey feeding bag, syringe, lukewarm water for flushing, connection adapter for bag if feeding tube utilizes cone tip connection. Twist and lock connections will not require a connection adapter. Holding the feeding bag upright, pour in the formula. With your hands, above the level of the formula, squeeze as much air out of the bag as possible, then securely close the lid. 
Place the feeding bag in the backpack by fastening the top handle to the backpack and securing the feeding bag with the strap. Open the blue door on the pump. Locate the clear tab on tubing and set into the pump facing upwards. Wrap the tubing around the pump wheel per the diagram under the door of the pump. Ensure that the tubing exits the side of the pump and then close the blue door. Place the pump in the front pocket of the backpack and secure it into place. Thread the tubing out of the backpack and zip it closed. This pump uses an internal rechargeable battery pack for up to 18 hours of backup power. Best practice is to keep the pump plugged in when not in use. Turn the pump on by holding down the power button located on the bottom right corner of the pump. Hold for three seconds before letting go. Press corresponding menu selection button to keep settings or clear settings. Keep settings. Select this option to start with the same settings that were most recently programmed into the pump. Clear settings. Select this option to reset all feeding settings. It will then be necessary to program all settings before running the pump. To enter the pump setting, select Clear Settings. Press Prime Pump, then press Auto Prime to automatically begin filling the tubing with formula. Press Hold to Prime Feed to manually run the formula to the end of the tubing, and then press Done. Select Adjust Feed, then Feed Rate, and use the buttons on the left to program the infusion rate per tube feeding order. Select Enter when the rate is set. Select Feed VTBD Volume to be delivered, and use the buttons on the left to program the ordered volume. Select Enter when the volume is set. Prior to administration, sit in an upright position, or if in bed, elevate the head of the bed at least 30 to 45 degrees. Do not lay flat during the feeding and for at least one hour afterwards. Place a towel on lap as formula may spill during administration. Flushing with water keeps your tube free from clogging and ensures daily fluid needs are met. Water flush requirements will be listed on your tube feeding order. Feeding tubes should be flushed with water before and after feedings as indicated on the tube feeding order. If giving medications through the feeding tube, flush the tube with water before and after administering each medication. Draw up water from container using a syringe. The amount required will be on the tube feeding order. If the feeding tube has a clamp, make sure it is in the closed position before opening the cap of the feeding tube. If the feeding tube does not have a clamp, pinch the tubing before opening the end. Open the cap at the end of the feeding tube. Attach the syringe to the feeding tube. The feeding tube may have a twist and lock connection or a cone tip connection. If the feeding tube has a clamp, make sure it is in the open position. If the feeding tube does not have a clamp, unpinch the tubing at this time. Push plunger on syringe to slowly administer water flush. After flushing, clamp or pinch the feeding tube before removing the syringe. Remove syringe from the feeding tube. Connect the end of the feeding bag to your feeding tube. If your feeding tube requires cone tip attachment, you will need to attach one of the connection adapters to the end of your feeding bag. Select Run on your pump to begin the feeding. Once the feeding is complete, push power down. Then close the clamp on the feeding tube or pinch the feeding tube if no clamp is present. Disconnect the feeding bag from the feeding tube and flush the feeding tube with water if prescribed on your tube feeding order. Close the cap at the end of the feeding tube. If your feeding schedule requires multiple feedings per day, rinse and reuse the feeding bag for 24 hours. Ensure the feeding bag is disconnected from the feeding tube. With the feeding bag still loaded in the pump, open the lid to the bag, add lukewarm water, and close the lid. Turn the pump on. 
Select Keep Settings, then hold down the Prime to Feed button to allow all the water to flow through the feeding bag. Be sure to hold the end of the tubing over the sink or garbage to discard. Once all water has run through the tubing, replace cap on the end of the tubing to avoid contamination. Repeat this step as many times as needed in a 24-hour period. Cleaned bags can be stored at room temperature for 24-hour period. Discard the bag after 24 hours. If you attached one of the cone tip connectors to the end of your feeding bag, be sure to unscrew the connection adapter before discarding the bag. Clean and reuse each adapter for up to three days. Each patient receives 10 connection adapters per month. At start of care, patients receiving enteral feeding with a pump will receive two emergency bags to be used without the pump called gravity bags in a large Ziploc bag with a label stating, emergency use only. Store these bags in a safe location where you can access them in case of a power outage or weather emergency and may be without a source of electricity. If the pump malfunctions, call Option Care Health for further instructions. Some patients may be directed to use the emergency gravity sets until another pump can be delivered. The pump should be cleaned weekly or when visibly dirty. To clean, first ensure the feeding set is not loaded. Unplug the power cord from the enteral pump. Using a clean, damp, not wet cloth, gently clean the surface area of the pump including thoroughly cleaning the area where tubing is set and the black rotor wheel. Warning, do not immerse pump or power cord in water or other cleaning solutions. As with any AC powered electrical device, care must be taken to prevent liquid from entering the pump to avoid electrical shock hazard, fire hazard, or damage to electrical components. Tips for successful administration of your enteral feedings. Use only Kangaroo Joey pump tubing sets that are provided. Never ignore a pump alarm. And familiarize yourself with the information provided in your delivery regarding alarms on the pump. If unsure how to correct an alarm, call your Option Care Health team. Avoid dropping the pump or hitting it against a hard surface. Never use an extension cord. Do not put anything other than formula water or medication ordered by your doctor through your feeding tube. If you experience diarrhea, constipation, nausea, vomiting, or other significant complications after initiating your tube feeding, it is important to notify your doctor. You may experience changes in bowel function, such as frequency, consistency, and appearance as a result of tube feeding. These changes should resolve in a few days once you become accustomed to the formula. If changes continue for more than three to five days, notify your doctor. Guidelines for refills. Your first delivery of formula and feeding supplies typically consists of a three to seven day supply. This may require a signature upon delivery. The remainder of the 30 day supply will be delivered by UPS and should be received within a few days. Option Care Health must communicate with you prior to setting up each monthly delivery. Scheduling automatic delivery is not possible. Your initial paperwork will include the phone number for refills. Please store this number in your phone or keep it in a safe place. If you are down to three to five days of formula or supplies, please contact us to avoid running out. It is important to maintain monthly contact with your Option Care Health team even if you do not need a delivery. The feeding pump provided to you by Option Care Health is a rental and must be returned at the end of therapy. Thank you for watching this instructional video. You have now viewed how to successfully administer your tube feeding by pump method. With each administration of your feeding, you will get more comfortable with supplies and steps needed to complete your feeding. Please notify your doctor if redness, leakage, swelling, or pain occurs around your tube or any other complications. For any questions or concerns you might have, 
please contact our highly trained multidisciplinary team of dietitians, pharmacists, and nurses. We are available to you 24-7, 365 days. Please contact Option Care Health at the number provided in your paperwork.